things about being able to come up and share scripture with you in the morning is that a lot of the times it's the Lord speaking to me and I just get to share with you but um yesterday I was sharing with the prayer team in the back on Friday we had an interesting event at my house I woke up at four something in the morning I went into the master bathroom I stepped on the carpet and it was soaking wet in there and I was like what is going on so I was getting ready for work, and then I went into the garage to get my work shoes, and I stepped in the garage, and a big old puddle in the garage, and I realized my water heater had been flooding. And so I was like, what do I do? I don't even know what to do in this situation. <laughs> so I turned everything off, and I went to work. <laughs> Uh, fortunate, f fortunately for me, I work with Kale, so I asked him, and he sent me home. And I went home, and so we swapped out the old one, put in the new one, dried everything up. But if you know me, you guys know that I'm I, I'm an indoor the in, inside the house kind of a man. I'm an indoor man. I'm not an outdoor construction kind of a guy, you know. So I had to watch about an hour of YouTube videos. YouTube certified. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I hooked the water tank up, I plumb it, I hooked the electrical up, I turned the power on. <laughs> I arc the power. I got to call my manly neighbor to come over and help me. And he rewired it, hooked it up, turned it on, and everything is good. 
But what was awesome about that entire situation is that this scripture came to my mind, and this scripture is from 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 16, where the word says, Rejoice always. Amen. <laughs> Pray and I continually. Yes. I did that. Yes. Give thanks in all circumstances, yep. for this is God's will That's for will. you in Christ. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're going through something in your life today, rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Pray continually Thank and give Jesus. thanks. Because the Lord is with you. And so Amen. we have so much to be thankful for, even though it looks like it's, we're in some tough times. So we like to open up in prayer. So if we can bow our heads and lift our hearts this morning. Father, we come before you as one family, the body of Christ. And we can only express in words, Lord, how grateful we are for your love and for your grace, and for your mercy. We thank you for your friendship and your fellowship. We thank you for always being there for us, Lord, even when we're standing in puddles, the puddles of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, this morning we want to come together and we want to praise you. We want to glorify you, Lord. We pray that you remove anything that is in us that is not of you, Lord, so that we can be holy and righteous in your yes. presence so that we can praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. We pray that we can glorify you in our worship. We can glorify you in our fellowship. Thank you, Lord. We pray for open hearts this morning to receive from you, Lord, praise you, Lord. to receive from the Holy Spirit revelation and knowledge. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for this time that you've set apart. We love you, O oh Lord. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. And we pray in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Thanks, Pastor Jason. I think that's in the Bible. What did I say? In this world, you will have puddles or trials or something like that. So here's the Lord's Prayer, at least some.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for being able to lift up a joyful noise to you this morning. Just praise your holy name. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit flow through each and every person here, Father. And let them just get into a place where they can worship you, Father God. We pray for those that are still on their way, Father. We pray for those that are out there on Zoom land and on the internet. May the Lord cover you and bless you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. serious look on her face. So I said, hey. She said, so she came to the, the window of the car and she said, my cancer has come back. My cancer has come back. And, um, and I was telling folks earlier, I probably should have been more, um, you know, pastorly, more um, sensitive. Or, but the only thing I could think of when she said, my cancer has come back, only thing I could think of at that moment is to say, yeah, mine too. And she said, really? And I said, yeah. 
And I said, in fact, I just saw the doctor last week on Thursday. And, uh, and I told him I'm not having any treatment. And she said, yeah, I told my doctor I'm not having any treatment either. And she went on to describe it and whatnot. So we talked a little bit until there were four cars in the back of me waiting. <laughs> <coughs> Fortunately, they're all very good sports because nobody was tuning the horn at me. You know, um, they were very considerate. So we ended. But when we ended, I said to her as, as I was getting ready to drive away, I said, so I'll pray for you and you pray for me. And um, I was thinking we should sing that. We should sing it. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'll pray for you and you pray for me. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life leads you.
I know. All right, we're about to get started. If you want to take your seats, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, good morning, New Hope Volcano. Hey, not bad. <laughs> not bad. All right, good morning. How many of you noticed we had a timer up on the screen this morning? <laughs> all right okay <laughs> all right we got some announcements for you this morning um you know a funny story about the water tank that i didn't i wasn't able to say in the morning but um um a funny story is that when i got up and i went in the bathroom and i stepped on the rug the first thing i thought was Oh, Isaiah was sleepwalking and he did number one on the on the floor. <laughs> and I was so upset. I was like, Isaiah, how why are you? And it wasn't until I went into the garage that actually that that thought left my mind. So we've got some announcements for you this morning. Um, the first one is if you are new and you want to be a part of this, a uh, part of our directory. This week is the last week to fill out the paperwork for the directory. So we have, we have um, 
some papers in the back. I know, okay, I said Troy and everybody else this morning, but it's okay. Uh, um, so fill out the directory. If you've done it already and you're in the directory already, no worries, no need to fill it out. We'll use your information from the last directory. But if you want to be in the directory and you're not in the directory, then there's some papers in the back you can fill out, drop into the offering bowl, and then uh, Auntie Lani will be processing the, the directory for all of us. And it's an awesome thing. It helps us to get in contact with you when we need to. And it also helps me when we celebrate the birthdays. I get to look at all the birthdays for the month. So don't forget to write your birthday in on the directory uh, when you do that. So I think that's all the announcements that I have. I'm going to call our sister Chris up for an announcement. Um, thank you, Chris. Yes. I'm sorry. Where's Pastor Ray Okay, come on up, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Guess what? God loves you. I think it's you. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, don't worry, I'm going to call up Stacy after. Yeah, okay. Um, Monday, people will be getting together to pray for you. So put your prayer requests in the bowl back there. Write them on a piece of paper, pass them to somebody so they can pray for you. Uh, Wednesday, Bible study, 5 o'clock out there yep. with yep. dinner. It seems like they got quiet when I came up. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, hula at 5 o'clock. Um, if you want to join, uh, we need to have you contact Keala so that you can get notified if they don't have Thursday night hula. But you don't have to dance in front of people. You can just come for fun and exercise. I think even men can come. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Friday morning, Yard Ninjas are here at 8 a.m. Yep. If you'd like to join them and continue making this place so beautiful. It's also a great time for fellowship. I heard they have breakfast. Um, Friday night is Celebrate Recovery. Yeah! At 6 o'clock. And, you know, I kind of challenge you to come check it out because I heard from recently from somebody who came that it's not what they thought it was gonna be. And it's a great place to take off your mask, right? Like, didn't we sing, uh, no sin, no shame, give gone in Jesus' name? Well, maybe, like, how does that actually work, right? Like, because you're all looking happy and nice and smiley. Well, at Celebrate Recovery, you can take off that mask and be who you really are. And it's confidential and anonymous. Yeah, so it's like, it's awesome. Um, Saturday, uh, the third Saturday is always men's ministry. It's going to be the 18th of May. Yep. Yep. Women's ministry is always the last Saturday, only on Zoom. So it was yesterday. Wasn't yesterday? <laughs> oh, oh, is rescheduled. Okay. Will it be May 25th? Okay. Well, she'll tell you about it when she comes up here. Um, then thrift shop is always the first and third Saturday from nine to 12. Discipleship class is every Sunday from 12 to two. Yep, yep, over there. Um, Backyard Kids Club, I think you're going to talk about that too. Yes, yeah, so excited about that. So keep on praying for that, and she's going to tell you more about that. And we are currently on Zoom. We are also on YouTube Live. You can go to newhopevolcano.com to find out more information. I send out a weekly email if you'd like to receive that weekly email. I realized I'm sending it to 100 people. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, but if you're not getting it, well, then you should. So give me your email address and I'll send it to you. And um, if you're looking for a way to serve, let me know. I've got some places for you to serve. And all glory and honor are his. Mahalo. Okay. All right. So... Um, so yeah, we, our house flooded Saturday, <laughs> was it Saturday? Saturday? Friday. Friday, I don't even know what day it is. Um, and Jason woke up four o'clock in the morning to go to work as he does every morning, thought Isaiah sleepwalk and peed on the floor because he does that. Um, and then I woke up at no, six. <laughs> then I, sorry, son. <laughs> I woke up at six, uh, opened the bathroom, the floor is flooded and I see a bunch of towels on the floor. And I'm like, what is going on? The first thing that thought that came to my mind is my husband clogged the toilet so bad. 
that it's leaking under the floor. And now it's, and he didn't even clean, he just threw some towels on the floor. So I called him, what happened? He said, don't worry, I'm on my way home. <laughs> and it wasn't him, thankfully, so. <laughs> I, and I told him when he came home, it was so funny. He said, I thought Isaiah Peter. I said, well, I thought you clogged the toilet. <laughs> but it was funny how we, yeah. yeah. Nobody thought it was me, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I want to start today with giving thanks. Thanks to God for who he is, for all that, for all that he is for us from the beginning of time to the end of time. All that he does in our lives, all that he's done in our lives, all that he's continued to working out, I mean, all that he continues to work out in our lives. I wanna start by giving thanks to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. I wanna thank the congregation. We have an amazing family here. Amen. I just was telling Jason last night, I, again, I love this family. I love, 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 love this family. My mm -hmm. husband had some fellowship with John yesterday. He mm -hmm. came home just totally rejuvenated because we had a long week. Yeah. Totally rejuvenated. And he was blessed and I was blessed. And then I'm just so thankful to the dedication and commitment of the members of this church. I want to thank all the people that bring food and desserts almost every Sunday or one Sunday out of the month. I want to thank you for your time because that takes time to get up early and, and cook for the church. And thank you from the bottom of my heart because you're feeding the whole Ohana. Amen. And I want to thank the people that are leading the small groups because it's those small groups that keep us going throughout the week. Um, and just everybody that plays a part in this church. Like, don't ever feel like you are unrecognized or overlooked. We see you, we love you, we appreciate you. And that's how I wanted to start it. <clears throat> so you thank too. you. <laughs> thank you for all you do. Thank you for the people who even just asked for help. Hey Stace, what can I help with? Thank you. Um, Sandy is putting together, or Sandy and I are putting together Backyard Kids Club this summer. It's going to be a one-week program for kids four through ten. Um, our youth is going to be a part of it. They're going to be help. They're going to help lead in, in certain areas, um, and then they're going to get compensation. Um, we also need volunteers to help. If you want to put together snacks for the kids, if you want to help put together lunch for the kids, if you want to help with arts and crafts, if you want to help with the games, um, if you want to donate to this donate. Um, and like Sandy said last Sunday, everyone can pray, right? Can everyone put their hands together? Bow your head and close your eyes. Okay, perfect. So everyone can pray. We have, she put together a prayer calendar for the month of May to pray for all the things for this program. But it's also just praying for the church, right? Amen. For everyone to step up and come together and make this possible because we can't do it alone. Um, so please pick one up if you haven't already. It's on the back table where Sandy is. Um, there should be enough. If there's not, I will make copies and have it there next Sunday. Um, but please pick one up because we do need prayers all the time. We need prayers all the time. Um, and then women's study. Yes, I canceled yesterday. I'm sorry. But I'm not canceling it altogether. I'm just postponing it to this Saturday. And we had a recommendation for it to be done at 10.30. I didn't get any interjections, so it's going to be this Saturday at 10.30 over Zoom. Um, please come. We're doing the first 10 chapters of the book of Matthew. There's a lot to cover. There's a lot to, to be revealed. Um, I know there's gonna be a lot of testimony, a lot of things to share. It's always a grand time. If you're not within the women's study and you want to be a part of it, all I need is your email and I can give you all the information. It really is, like I keep saying it, it's, it's so rejuvenating. I go in there exhausted as I do every single time and I come out just like a completely different person. There's, there's something about, it's one thing to go over the word and allow God to reveal to you personally what he wants to reveal to you. 
but it's a whole nother dynamic when you're with your brothers and sisters in Christ and you're receiving their revelation as well. Because sometimes we open the Bible and maybe we don't get something. And then we get like a, maybe a little seed planted and we're not really sure what it means. And then somebody shares something and you're like, oh, maybe that's what God was trying to tell me. So it really is a beautiful time. Please join us. If you're not signed up with us, all I need is your email. Okay, I love you. Thank you, love. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so this Saturday, 1030. Okay, just to make sure. This Saturday, 1030. So what I wanted to do is why I have the wireless mic is Pastor Ray, we'd like to pray over you this morning if we can. I've been waiting for you to sit down so I can come to you and pray for you, but you are everywhere this morning. But as a congregation, I'd like us all to come together and pray for you, lay hands on you. Um, for those of you who weren't here during worship, you can sit, Pastor, if you want. You're not going to lay hands on my prostate. Right not now. this morning. Not this morning. <laughs> he said, not this morning, Pastor. <laughs> so for those of you who have just arrived, uh, Pastor announced during worship that his cancer came back. His cancer came back, and he said that he's not seeking treatment. And so... Um, you know, for some of us, we might be questioning, like, why? Why wouldn't you seek treatment? Why would you seek treatment? That's between Pastor Ray and the Lord. But one thing we cannot question is Pastor Ray's faith this morning. And so let's bow our heads and let's lift Pastor Ray up. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you as, as one body, the body of Christ, Lord. And we come before you this morning and we lift our brother, Pastor Ray, up to you, your son, Lord. And we thank you so much for his heart and his love for you and the example that he leads, leaves for each and every one of us here, Lord. His faith in you strengthens our faith, Father. And sometimes we don't understand and we can't understand some of the things that happen to us in life. And when something like this occurs, it makes puddles seem like such a small thing but we pray this morning lord because your word says to to tell you the desires of our hearts and this morning we pray for healing for pastor ray lord that this cancer be removed of him completely and once and for all and father you can use any one of these these hands that are here any one of these hearts to heal heal pastor ray you can use the chair that he's sitting on to heal him. We have faith in that, Lord. But above everything, above everything we believe, Lord, above everything that we put our faith in, we trust your will. And we pray for your will to be done in his life, your good, pleasing, and perfect will, Lord. We set aside our worries and our concerns, and we put our trust fully in you this morning, Father. So it is our desire that Pastor Ray be healed. But whatever you decide to do, Lord, as your word said this morning, we will rejoice in all circumstances because we know that we know that we know that at the end of the day, we know where Pastor Ray will be. And he will be rejoicing in heaven with you. And so we celebrate that. We rejoice in that. We give thanks in that. We love you, Lord. We give you all glory and praise. And we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. We love you, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Okay. So, hallelujah that we can come together. Come together and pray for each other. Just like the song said. And we trust in the Lord fully. It was just pointed out to me a moment ago. He may not be seeking treatments from the doctors, but he's seeking treatment from the Lord. And we trust in that a lot more. Amen. Amen. All right. So I think the youth group can be excused. Uh, that's all the announcements we have for you this morning. We are about to collect the tithes and the offerings. And for most of you that are here, you know that there are two ways that you can give. We have a website, newhopevolcano.com, where you can go and on the homepage, click on the hamburger menu, the drop-down menu, 
and uh, there is a link that you can click give online and you can give your tithe or your offering that way. If you're in the building and you want to give a tithe or your offering, um, we have the offering boy in the back where Laurie is. You can drop it off that way. Uh, and of course, we say all of that just to say, if you're visiting us for the first time, please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, as, as Stacy was saying this morning, what an amazing church to be a part of. We are so grateful. Not only us, but in my conversations with all of you, we're all so grateful to be a part of New Hope Volcano. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we can bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just, we're so grateful. We're so thankful. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for providing for us in every way, Lord that we need not concern ourselves with those things, that you know what we need before we even ask. And Lord, sometimes it's financially, sometimes it's spiritually, sometimes it's physically, but the fact remains the same, that you are where our help comes from. And we thank you for this campus, Lord, that we can come, that we can fellowship, that we can pray, that we can praise you, that we can teach the youth, that we can share a meal and break bread together. We thank you for providing this place for us. And this morning, we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. And most importantly, we pray that we use it according to your will. We thank you for your presence here this morning, Lord. We just pray the Holy Spirit sweep through this place, touch each and every one of our hearts, we pray that you speak to our brother Happy this morning as he shares your word with us. We pray that we can have open ears and open hearts and open minds to receive from you whatever it is you have in store for us this morning. We love you, O oh Lord. We give you the glory and the praise. And we pray in the precious name of Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn this mic over to our brother happy if you can help me welcome him as he's sharing the word of god with us this morning okay thank you Good morning. Good morning. I always like to get up here and look up and make eye contact with each and every one that is here. Okay. Although I'd need better glasses to see you guys out there, but okay. Just know that it's all about how we touch one another's hearts. And that's what we're here to do. That's what God brings us here to do. You know, and what a blessing it is to experience this morning's praise and worship. You know, it's like, I love it, you know. And I would pray that, that all of you get to or would recognize the work, not just the, the song of it, but to recognize the words that are in those praise songs. And I love it how all the praise songs and worship songs echo and magnify the scripture that we come to learn and read each and every day. And that's the beautiful thing about um, being a Christian in, in one of my perspectives is that we get to come together and, and experience the love of God in unity. Okay, I, uh, first of all, this is supposed to be a reading invitation. All of it's not visible. There's a top part to it, okay? And it's an invitation from God to the wedding banquet, which we're going to be talking about today, okay? 
I believe that, you know, this was put on my heart um, a little bit before Christmas or during Passion Week um, when we were just going through the word and uh, Sandy and I just, you know, are constantly watching um, gospel uh, shows on, on TV, you know, of all the saints, of all the the, the past, uh, all of the uh, disciples and apostles and, you know, um, and, and doing this, okay, somewhere it came through and something I love is that God told us, Jesus told us that he goes and prepares a place for us. You know, I don't know about you, but, you know, my life when I was growing up, you know, I just wanted a chair at the, the dining room table, okay, where I could feel part of, you know, the, the family. And uh, that didn't happen so much until, you know, Jesus Christ entered my life in a bold way, you know, but to just know that He's gone to create a place for us in which we'll be getting into today. Let me just go ahead and, and read today's passage. It's from Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. So if you have your Bible, I would encourage you to, to follow through because you're probably going to want to highlight or underline some of the, some of the um things that the Holy Spirit places on your heart. 22, verse 1 through 14. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants, so those who had been invited, to the banquet to tell them to come. But they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calves have been butchered and cooked and everything is ready. So come, now's the time. But they paid him no attention and, and went off. One to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed the murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go, go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servant went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with the guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. He had no answer. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him aside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So first of all, okay, what I want to just introduce is the fact that this is a parable, okay, um, from Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. And basically, a parable is just an earthly story with heavenly meaning. Okay. Jesus, who's the master teacher, often taught in parables. The word parable, in fact, is derived from a Greek word signifying to come together and denotes comparison taken from a natural object or event to illustrate a spiritual or moral concept. So in taking a look at an overview of the wedding feast, 
we see that the Lord reveals how people in a very clear way reject him. In this parable, they are rejecting kindness, which he has been grace, graciously offered to them. And we know that even today, many are also rejecting the gospel invitation that Christ is sending us. You know, in this parable, we also see an expansion of the element of divine judgment that we'll be talking about. The parable describes judgment upon Israel for rejecting God's son. The parable also describes judgment upon those who accepted the king invitation, yet not in a way that it was intended to be received. You see, in the Old Testament, the Jews thought they were the only ones to be saved. And that carried on right into the New Testament as far as some of their beliefs. But not so, okay, in regards to Jesus, because Jesus went on to open the gates of the kingdom to all the people from all nations. I love the song, we're going up, you know. Everybody yell out, we're going up. One, two, three. We're going up. Okay. Amen. Amen. So as we're going to learn, the parable of the wedding banquet is about the invitation of God for all people to be part of his kingdom. My hope and, and goal here is to use this metaphor or this parable to put it alongside what being invited to Christ and the wedding feast of the Lamb and note the differences and praise God for those differences. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we would pray that... Uh, Pastor Jason prayed that you would open up our eyes and open up our ears. I pray that you would touch our hearts, Lord, so that we can come to better know you, to be more like you, and to please you as it is the desire of our heart. So please bless this time in your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, now, now the awesome thing we see is in Revelation 19, verses 7 through 10, where John saw and heard the heavenly multitudes praising God because the wedding feast of the Lamb. In fact, you know, they're, they're singing, they're singing, they're singing, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. This is the heavenly host. Okay, um, that John is talking about that is in heaven. And then they go on to, to praise God for the wedding of the Lamb has come. That's us. That's us. And his bride has made himself ready. That's us. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Now, let me take a moment and talk about the, the Jewish culture and how the wedding banquet was one of the most joyous occasions in Jewish life. Them folks could carry on a wedding banquet for a week or more, okay? And the awesome thing is we'll get to experience it for eternity. You know, in Jewish society, the parents of the betrothed generally drew up the marriage contracts. And I really liked that one time when, when Pastor Henry uh, was here, he talked about, okay, the Jewish wedding feast and just made it so clear, so an encouragement to attend some of these special things that, that we have that talks about the word of God. Okay. So in Jewish society, like I said, the parents of the patrol um, generally drew up the marriage contract. Then the bride and groom would meet, maybe for the very first time when this contract was, was signed. The couple was considered married at that point, 
but they would separate until the actual time of the ceremony. The bride would go to, to her parents' home and the groom would leave to prepare their home, much like Jesus going to prepare a place for us. Okay. Taking and creating a, a, and preparing a home could, could take a, a quite a while. But when the home was all ready and finished, the groom would return for his bride without notice. And just earlier in this gospel, you know, Matthew talked about the parable of the 10 vir virgins and how they needed to make sure that their lamps stayed full of oil because we don't know when Jesus is coming for us. So anyway, the marriage ceremony would take place and the wedding banquet would follow. Party time. Okay. In verse two, okay, where it talks about the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who made a marriage feast. You know, again, in the parable, okay, it's intended to help us to understand the differences between the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of heaven. The wedding banquet is a metaphor for the messianic banquet that we'll enjoy with Christ in the kingdom of heaven that is alluded to in the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 8. Moving on into verse 3, we want to acknowledge okay, that the king had sent out servants okay, to call those who were invited. You know, and back in that day, the king, or in our comparison, God takes the initiative to organize the marriage feast and to invite the guest. It's God, okay? The point is that a relationship to God depends on what God has done for us. The initiative is God's, not ours. So preparing for a banquet is expensive and requires time. So the custom was to send out and have people accept inv the invitation well in advance. Then the host would know how much to prepare as far as food and uh, how many people had accepted. And then the extension of the invitation thereby obliged or obligated the host to prepare and the accepted guest obliged to appear. Once the banquet was ready, the host sends out a second notice. And it's rather like our, our custom of making a doctor's appointment and then the day before how they now call us or give us a text to let us know, okay, don't forget. Uh -huh but they wouldn't come. You know, a guest who fails to attend not only causes food to be wasted, um, but also dishonors the host. This would be especially true in the culture of time of that place. The invited guest offered no excuses, but simply refused to honor the invitation. Can you imagine? Okay. You know, it was one thing to accept an invitation for dinner to be held sometime in the future, to accept the invitation in principle, but such, such acceptance, got things going off in my ear, okay. But such acceptance, Okay, did not inconvenience, as long as such acceptance did not inconvenience them. Um, bottom line, it was an honor to be invited. So that part was all good. Yeah. It's something entirely different now that the time to drop what they are doing, to change clothes and to go to the banquet. Now the invitation calls for action. They see only its inconvenience. Likewise, the call of Christ and its specifics can be inconvenient for us Christians as well. 
just like the invitees. We find it easy to accept Christ in principle. Yeah? Yeah, I'm a believer. Okay. And like them, we find it less easy to accept the responsibility to follow through with the commitment. You know, we've been learning in Master Life where it tells us in Luke 9, 23, you know, when Jesus said to them all, if you truly desire to follow me, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. Christ's call to serve, which should be fueled by our spiritual gifts, by engaging in daily reading of his word, praying in faith, forsaking not the fellowship of the saints, and witnessing to the lost, let alone serving in the leadership of the church, or being sexually abstinent until marriage, or inviting a co-worker to church, or to tithe, seems to be different story for some at times. You know, this is where the, the, the rubber meets the road, and it can be de demanding. Okay? We become greatly tempted to reserve our discipleship for the parts of life that don't require us to change or don't force us out of our comfort zone, that don't inconvenience us in any way. We see in verse 4 the king's appeal. Okay. We see how the king is making an engaging appeal to persuade the invitees to attend. As often with the case of an allegory, the story is a little exaggerated in that a uh, real life king would have just wiped them all out, no questions asked rather than taking the time to re-invite them. Okay. So we see in verse 5 that those invitees, they, they really blew off the king. They made light of it, and they went their own ways. Now, to make light of a king's invitation is to insult the king, as I said before. Bottom line, they were caught in trouble. A king dishonored in this fashion must take it upon himself to punish the offenders, to savage his honor. We see in, in this verse that the things that are listed are good things, not bad, that distracted them. It's not like their problem was drinking or whoring around, but the routine of daily life. Just doing daily life. We've got to note that it's not because the invited guests could not come to the wedding feast, but that they would not come. Just like Jesus states in Luke 13, 24. You know, everyone had an excuse. How tragic and how indicative of the human nature to be offered the blessings of God and to refuse them because of the draw to mundane things in our lives. We know that temptation often comes clothed in wholesome attire, yeah? We have to work, run errands, take care of children, clean the house, cook, wash dishes, pay the bills, mow the lawn, where can we find time for God? Perhaps we should pencil them in in our to-do list. And those in master life know that that's not such a bad idea. Okay. Or perhaps we will wait for the time when we have plenty of time, a time which is never likely to come. The truth is, is that we make time for those things that count that we count as important those worldly things so it makes sense that we also would want to not find the time but make the time for Jesus you know God wants a, uh, wants to be at the top of our priority list we're also learning in master life okay 
He goes on, and it, we see in Matthew 6, 20, or 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And moving into verse 6, we see that they actually even killed the messenger to the invitees. It's a reference to the prophets, God's messengers, which were often murdered by by Israel. You know, it was bad enough that some of the invitees made light of the king's invitation. As far as the group that, in the verse said, the rest is in full violent uh, rebellion toward the king. Now Matthew is writing this after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD and makes it clear that the destruction was the judgment of God upon the people of Israel. More broadly, the king's vengeance speaks of the desolation mentioned in the book of Revelations. You know, God is patient, but he's not going to tolerate wickedness forever. His judgment is going to come upon all of us, especially those who reject his offer for salvation. So verse 8 basically is indicating that if we snooze, we lose. Okay. Now keep in mind again that Jesus is speaking to the Jewish religious leaders who were present, and therefore Matthew includes it uh, in this gospel. Okay. Because the Jewish readers uh, and the Christians, they would understand about those invited referring to Israel. The Apostle Paul also addressed this issue in Romans 1 verse 16, where he says that the gospel is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. There was a second part of the king's plan. The king sent a third set of slaves to go out. Had to, because the alternative would be to have no guests, an empty banquet hall, no banquet, no dancing, no celebration, no party. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we've seen that the, the king was partially redeemed um, by punishing those who, who spurred his invitation. But his honor is still in jeopardy unless he presents the bride and groom with this glorious banquet. That requires guests, lots of guests. If the king can't fill the, the hall with people of high estate, he's going to fill it with, quote, as many as they could find, anyone who will come. And that also includes the Gentiles. You know, there have been statements in the Gospel of Matthew from the very beginning throughout that the invitation would be extended beyond Israel. We know that the genealogy of Jesus included Rahab, a Canaanite, and Ruth, a Moabite. Matthew also told us about the visit of the Magi from the east in, in the second chapter of Matthew. And we'll see as Matthew closes in verse 28 that Jesus tells us, in fact, to go out and make disciples of all the nations. So in between, Matthew includes this series of parables about the two sons, the wicked tenants, and the wedding banquet. And they all give a veiled reference to the unfaithfulness of Israel and the extension of the invitation to the Gentiles. We should not inter interpret this parable as meaning that God has in excluded Israel. Okay. Paul makes that point in Romans 11.1 1, when he asks, 
Did God reject his people? And then he answers, may it never be. He says of the Jewish people in Romans 11, 28 and 29, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Irre okay. okay. So we see in verse 10, all are invited. The slaves gather in both the bad and the good. The wedding hall was filled with guests. And again, this reflects the church of Matthew's day, which was struggling with the problem of Christians who failed to exhibit evidence in their personal lives and their relationship with Christ. And really, it's no different from the church today when you think about it in so many cases. Matthew's concern with faithful Christian lives is also reflected in the words that he records Jesus saying in his gospel. In Matthew 5, 20, okay, he said, uh, quotes Jesus saying, for I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, there is no way you will ever enter into the kingdom of heaven. Are you hearing this? There's no way. You can fool yourselves as long as you like. I can fool myself as long as I like. But if I haven't given my life fully to Jesus Christ and his will that comes through him for my life and accept that salvation, I'm not going to make him. Also in Matthew 7, 21, it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So we can have this artificial relationship with Jesus Christ. We could call him Lord, Lord. We can come to church on Sundays. We can sit in our Wednesday Bible studies. But if we haven't offered our heart to him and opened our heart to him to have us completely experience the fullness of God through him and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we're missing it. We're missing it. Also in Matthew 21, 43, it says, Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to a nation, bringing forth its fruit. And we see that, you know, God is, the, and Jesus is divine, and we are the branches, okay? But it talks also about if we're not usurping, okay, the nutrients from the vine of Jesus, we're going to wither away and die. And when that happened to a plant, bottom line, they hacked off that limb and threw it into the fire. No use. No use. We need to understand that there is a protocol. A protocol for attending the wedding banquet. The failure to wear wedding attire is not to be taken lightly in this parable. The other guests apparently had wedding robes, and this man becomes very evident to the king by his failure to have um, a wedding robe or dressed appropriately for the occasion. So we see as a result of that in verse 12, we actually get to experience the judgment seat. When he says, friend, how did you come in here not wearing wedding clothing? So we need to ask ourselves, what is the meaning of the wedding rope in the Christian context? Jesus doesn't tell us, but given the reference to bad and good in the verse, okay, and Matthew's concern for righteousness, it just stands to reason that the wedding robe equates to God's righteousness that we're dressed in when we accept Jesus Christ as our savior. 
You know, he even, you know, quoted Revelation before, you know, where the end of that praise song that the heavenly host was singing, they acknowledged that they're going to be dressed in fine linen because it's the righteous acts um, of Christ. So the issue would appear then to be our sanctification, growth and holiness by the power of the Holy Spirit, righteousness, disciplined lives. The errant guest has declined to put on Christ. And he's not valued holiness, has not chosen to live as a saint, but rather as a sinner. Therefore, this parable warns that God will no more accept the rebellion of the unrighteous um, than he will accept the rebellion of those who refuse the invitation. Same thing. So in verse 13, we get to see that we make a choice, okay? And I often refer to this choice as, are we going to choose the smoking section or the non-smoking section, okay? It truly really is our choice because God gives us free will. You know, it goes on to say that, okay, that the king, had this man tied up, hand and foot, taken away, ordered to throw him into the outside darkness. This is where the weeping and the gnashing of teeth is going to occur. And trust me, it's real. You know, the gospel it includes several references to terrible eschological punishment characterized by the weeping and gnashing of teeth. We see in Matthew 13, 42 and 50, Matthew 24, 51 and 25, 30, that it's Jesus that tells us of such punishment. So in verse 14, where it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. We need to understand that throughout scripture, we find God calling particular people, you and me, to particular missions. When we accept Christ into our life, we're all given the power of the Holy Spirit. We're sealed so that we can be empowered to do his will and the things that he is asking us to do. In the Old Testament, we see God chose Abram and Abram's descendants, bringing them into a covenant relationship that made Israel to be God's chosen people. In the New Testament, we find the idea of election, which suggests that God has chosen or elected, okay, only certain people for salvation. More precisely, we are among the many who have been called in the Greek, kletos, but only the elect, or in the Greek, eklektos, have chosen to respond. We can choose to respond. We should not take the word few for, for granted because it doesn't mean that heaven is going to be sparsely per, uh, populated. This parable has to do with accountability, not heavenly demographics. It's intended not to frighten us, but to encourage us to make, take seriously the challenges of crystal, uh, Christian discipleship. And why wouldn't we? You know, I'm reminded of a, of a story of a husband and wife that passed away. God took them home and, you know, they met Peter at the pearly gates and Peter gave them the grand tour, walked them through the streets of gold and took them to their mansion that Jesus had prepared for them. You know, Peter then points out to the couple, the beachfront, okay that was right outside their home, that they had dreamed about 
living in a place like that for years. Peter opens up the door to this grand mansion, okay, that couldn't be decorated to their likings any more perfectly than it was. Okay. And if that didn't wasn't enough, Peter takes them out to the back lanai. And the back lanai, you could see this well-groomed, beautiful golf course. <laughs> and the guy lost it at that point. Takes off his hat, throws it down, starts stamping on it, and really becomes a set. And his wife's going, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he tells his wife, if you wouldn't made me eat healthy for the last 20 years, I could have been here 20 years sooner. Okay. Okay. But again, it's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. We can't even imagine it. There's no words to describe it. it we're going to be in the presence of God's glory. The good news it's that those of us who believe in Jesus Christ have been forgiven of our sins, washed as clean as snow, washed as white as those garments referred to. Okay. So thereby we're chosen and invited to the external wedding banquet in heaven. Again, Christ tells us, that he went to prepare this place for us. We're all going to have different places, okay? Because he's, he's creating them and preparing them specifically for each one of us. Not going to be any marriages, okay? So each one of us get a mansion of, of some level or another. That's going to be decorated and laid out just as we always had dreamed. You know, scripture also tells us that heaven will be a place where we serve God as we always wish we could. You know, we're, we're going to be in God's glory. Okay. And we're going to be able to serve him, to love him the way we always desire it and the way we desire today, but get limited because of our sin nature. Not going to be any of that. Okay. Revelation 7.15 says, we're going to be before the throne of God and serve him daily, uh, day and night in the temple. Number two, in heaven, Christ is going to lead us into everlasting joy. In Revelation 7, 16, it tells us the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water. He's going to take care of us. He's there with us. He loves us and we know his voice so we're going to follow him okay and long to be with him all that we can you now i came across some writings of jonathan edwards um, in regarding heaven and he went on to say their knowledge will increase to eternity and if their knowledge their holiness for as they increase in the knowledge of god they will see more of his excellency or beauty. And the more they see of his beauty, the more they will love him. And the more they love God, the more delight and happiness they will have in him. Unendless happiness, unbounding. So friends, we're, we're talking about exponentially increasing joy. Okay. Can you imagine what that joy is going to be like after a million or two million years, okay, or seasons or however time it, it, it is registered up there? It'll be an age, okay. Number three, something is so precious that we, we prayed about today. 
in heaven, all our wounds will finally be healed. God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Every tear. Literally, the tears are going to be wiped away out of our eyes. This is telling us God removes not only tears, but also the source that produces those tears. It's all going to be history that isn't even going to register on our Richter scale because we get to be in God's radiant glory. Nothing will compare. In the book of Revelation, John sees the glory of heaven, the presence of Jesus, the glory of a new creation. But then, like a drumbeat, you have this repeated statement of what will not be there. No death. No mourning, no sins to confess, no temptations to overcome, no sickness to suffer, no pain to endure, no crosses to carry, no fears to face. Now, I don't know about you, but many days that consumes my whole day. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Won't be experiencing any of that. So we need to look at what lies ahead of us. So it'll help us to face whatever you're facing today. We need to acknowledge the kingdom. We are reminded that heaven is our father's house. And I must admit, I can't help thinking what a grief it must be to God that so few of his children want to go home. Here we are in enemy territory amid the sufferings of the present time, beset by sin and seeing our Father's name dishonored all around us, and yet we want to dismiss the wedding invitation for our own selfish reasons. <laughs> So being in the presence of his eternal glory, well, it's going to be our great delight in heaven. So find the joy in Christ now by accepting his invitation. Follow Christ. And following him is going to lead us into springs of living water in heaven. So let's find life by following Christ now so that Christ can wipe away every tear from our eye in heaven, that we can find comfort by drawing near to him. Now, for those of you that have not accepted the wedding invitation, but the desire to, to do so, and become a child of God, and to have him rule in your life as your personal savior, forgiven of our sins, so that God the Father does not see any of those things anymore. He sees us as white as snow, because we're blood, uh, covered with the blood of Jesus. So if you're not saved yet, repeat after me. And the congregation here will also repeat an uh, encouragement to you. But it's time. What are you waiting for? Okay. How does those things that we described on earth even come close to preparing to the riches that God has in store for us in the mansion that Jesus has prepared for those that have accepted him. So if you want to accept Christ into your life, repeat after me. Congregation, please help out. Father God, thank you so much for your love. Lord, you know I'm a sinner. I have lived at enmity with you. And I have not followed your ways. Father God, I've, I ask your forgiveness of those sins right now. 
And I want to claim the blood of Jesus to wash away all my sins. Father God, I say this with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. And I want to do your will. So bless me, Father, as I accept Jesus Christ as my loving Savior into my life today. And I pray and I know that according to your promises, you will put those people, places, and things in my life so I can continue to draw closer to you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the comparison that you showed us between the king's banquet he prepared for his son and the wedding feast of the lamb that we will experience for eternity with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father God, we ask that you bless us, that we would be living examples and ambassadors of your word, that others would see in us your glory and come to know you more. Help us as we drive through these gates, Father God, and leave um, this session today to be all that you created us to be. Put in our lives those people you would have us encourage and shine your light on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's say thanks to him. Thank you so much. I was sitting there listening to you describing heaven and our mansion and everything. And you know, when you live in this world, especially you live, you know, in our islands, um, you see lots of beautiful things. I mean, you can, you look at Holly Mau Mau Crater, oh, the majesty is breathtaking. Uh, Anakala Wendell and uh, Marianne went to visit uh, my birthplace, Kohala. There's Pololu Valley, majestic if you look at that valley. So many beautiful things. And the Lord has already created that. It's finished. But he's still working on our mansion. So if it's beautiful like these things here, you can, I was going to say, yeah, I think you can imagine, but I don't think you can imagine how beautiful your mansion is because you've been working on it for a long, 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 long this marks the formal conclusion to our Sunday morning service. We're going to sing one more song. If you feel like singing, you can stay in the room, you can sing. Uh, but the service is over, so once we start singing, if you're ready for your hospitality and your refreshments, you can exit through the door there on my left. And as I say most weeks, don't worry, because you don't hurt my feelings if you walk out while we're singing. It's all right. Go ahead. No problem. Uh, if you're going to take advantage of the rest of the day and you're going to leave now, let me just caution you, as I do most weeks, when you get to Highway 11, the cars are flying up and down there so quickly that you would really be wise to watch very carefully both sides of the road before you proceed on to Highway 11. Okay, so whatever you decide to do, we're just honored that you came uh, here this morning in person and all of you on the, on the uh, virtual broadcast. God bless you and have a great rest of your week.